the Winchester Model 94 in probably what is the best known, most successful hunting cartridge ever developed. And that would be the good old 3030. First, when it first came out, it was the, just called the 30 WCF, which was Winchester Centerfire. The 30 WCF has probably killed more animals than any other cartridge on earth. It's very, very successful. I mean, Winchester still says it's their best selling round ever. And so we're gonna look at it in this Winchester Model 94. And uh, we're gonna come out with a video on uh, brush guns later. But right now, today, we're gonna be shooting a variety of bullets. Let me show you some of them. This in here is the regular old Remington, 150 grain. This is the FTX, 160 grain. And this in here is a Remington uh, Core Lock, 220 grain. We're gonna be shooting it into some wet cloth over there. Just sort of checking them out. We're also going to shoot these two, which is 150 grain from Georgia Boy 44, and this is a 190 grain uh, RCBS bullet. And we're going to shoot them and just kind of compare the the power and uh, how well they'll rip through that ballistic material and what kind of a wound channel they would make, and kind of get an idea how well this gun does in today's world. Now, when this thing come out it was a little bit less powerful than it is now like you have these uh, FTX's they still have a thousand foot pounds at 300 yards you know this right here this these these cartridges you know back say in the 90s a lot of people said that it was underpowered and it wouldn't kill deer sufficiently well those same people are running around with the 300 blackout claiming it's the best thing ever so you can see that that was just rhetoric and because this is more powerful than the 300 blackout easy hands down it's also more versatile in the gun it come out in for instance this gun you could load this with black powder you could load it with black powder substitutes lead bullets jacketed bullets you could even use round balls if you wanted to it's very very versatile and like i said this is a 220 grain bullet 150 grain bullet and so let's get started and do some shooting and see what happens all right it's going to be between the ftx with and the 150 grain core lock okay we're going to shoot the ftx on the right and the core lock on the left Okay, here goes that FTX. We'll check the velocity out in a second and see what it is. Okay, here's the core lock on the right. Let's check them out and see how well they did. That core lock was doing 2,460 eight uh, uh, feet per second out of this longer barrel. Let's see what the other one was doing. Let's see. The FTX was going 2,348, and then uh, this one was doing 2,468. So we're gonna keep that on there. Let's check out how well they did. Okay. They're both making a nice little pathway through here. This one here is really look at the look at the size of that hole. Okay, it's slowing down. Still making a bigger hole on this side, so slowing down. Still going? Okay. This one here stopped. This one here still going. Now it stopped. Okay. 
Let's see where the other one stopped. It stopped right here. So we have literally not that much more penetration. Let's open it up. Get that bad boy out of there. <laughs> that bad boy's hard to get out. And these things really expand it out. Good. So this is our FTX. It's the one making the biggest bullet hole. This looks like our jacket on that 150 grain. So after it lost its jacket, it kept on going for a ways. So we get that out of there. Of course, this, is, this could be an old jacket on a different bullet because I've shot a lot of bullets into this, but no, nah, I think this is 30 caliber. That looks like it's jacket. Okay, let's finish digging the bullet out. It stopped in this one. Yep, here it is. Just the core. So the 150 grain actually went further, but as you can tell, it did not stay together or expand as well. So we're gonna set these down here and proceed on to the next rounds. Okay, the penetration on them was about 16 and 17 inches. So let's get on to the next one. Gonna shoot the lead bullet on the right and the jacketed on the left. Let's see, that lead bullet was going, let's see, 2,162 feet a second. Still a fairly rounded primer. All right, let's see how fast this jacket bullet's going. Here goes nothing. It was going 18, 89. Okay, make sure y'all can see everything. Get this out of the way. Two holes coming through. Two holes coming through. Some pretty good size. Wing channel's coming through there. That's a pretty good size channel that jacket bullet's making. Still trucking. Hmm. Got that lead bullet already. So, here's the jacket bullet too. Remember that's a 220 grain jacketed bullet. So they basically both stopped in about the same distance. The bullet almost looked like it was a hollow point, but it wasn't the way it ripped open. So there we are with those. All right, now we're gonna take a shot at that armor plate. Try to shoot it up there with a 5.56 hit and see what the difference is between the 30.30 and the 5.56. Hit it right at the top. Let's see what the difference is. 30.30 versus 5.56. Well, I wonder if it broke a hole because it was close to the top, but the 3030 busted through it, and the 556 five, put these little dents in it. The but anyhow, the 3030 is not the little wimpy cartridge a lot of people think it is. 
Now this was 142 grain bullet, so it's going a little bit faster than normal. But uh, hey, 3030's got some power to it. All right, we're gonna try this 140 grain bullet. See how well it does on that armor plate. Let's check it out. I, I don't know if it penetrated or not. My goodness, I would have never thought the 3030 could knock a hole in it. Here is a 5.56. Five, Here is a 5.56. Five, five, These are green tips. And this is the 3030. I, I, I would have never thought it would go through there, even though I'm using a lighter bullet. And, uh, you know, of course, stepping it up. But anyhow, there's the base of that bullet. And you can see it hit this right here log, the chunk that come out of there. Man, that's pretty cool. A 3030 will go through it. Anyhow, like I said, a 3030 is not a wimpy cartridge. It has more power than a lot of people think it does. And, uh, wow. I'm surprised. I guess it has something to do with that really flat nose. That's impressive. I wonder if I could do the same thing. See, there's a 348, and I know it was going faster than that right there, but maybe it didn't have a square of a flat nose. Hmm. It's something I need to try out. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to shoot it about right in here. And uh gonna shoot it with this here bullet, the 3030. And I'm going to leave the camera rolling so you can see that there's no hanky-panky going on. I'm actually shooting it. And uh, not going to delay anything, turn anything off or anything. I am going to turn this camera off on my way down. 30-30. Make sure you can see this. Right here. It's a 30-30. This here is the bullet hole right here. This is the bullet hole. 4570 did not penetrate this. The regular 348 did not. I think it has something to do with that really flat nose. So that bullet should be in here or that debris. So let's look in here and see what we can find. I mean, if you was wearing this, is this would keep on coming through you. I mean, look, it's already gone through that much. I think. I think it's petering out. No, it's still going. That no, stopped right in here. Okay, here's the piece of metal. This is the piece of metal that come out of the back of that and it went this far that through that much cloth which would have been all the way through you if you was wearing that and somewhere probably not much more than the base of the bullet stopped in this stuff anyhow 30-30 armor plate no problem that's a 142 grain bullet that one is too that one is Do you notice how real flat they was i think that has a lot to do with it i heard that the pointed bullets when they hit they're trying to displace the metal this direction that direction this is just trying to knock a plug out and you look it just knocked the plug out so that's interesting to me So here's our bullets we fired today. These were through that wet cloth. This is the 200 grain bullet. This is the FTX. This is the solid lead. And here's the 150 grain. What's left of it? The old 3030 has more power than a lot of people think. 
It's more versatile than a lot of people think. And it's still an awesome gun. Awesome caliber. Awesome gun caliber combination when you mix it with the 94 Winchester. I was actually wrong. I was able to find the bullet. It went just a little bit past where the uh, slug stopped. And this is what remains of that bullet. This is just the back of that jacket. And uh, here's that plug it knocked right out. It's amazing to me how it does it. That's something interesting. I think uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more investigating into flat nose bullets and their impact on stuff like steel.